Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the Dropbox components from within the SSIS Productivity Pack. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. As of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack offers three Dropbox components. The Dropbox Connection Manager can be used to establish connections with Dropbox. The Dropbox Source Component can be used to read and retrieve data from Dropbox. And the Dropbox Destination Component can be used to write data to Dropbox. To get started, let's create a simple SSIS project. This tutorial will assume that you have the SSIS bits installed, otherwise you will not see the SSIS project type here. In the Business Intelligence template, select the Integration Services project and give your project a name. Press OK to create the solution. SSIS is an ETL platform that can be used to implement data migration and integration using its drag and drop capabilities. To begin the SSIS implementation using our toolkit, we will configure the Connection Manager to manage the connections with Dropbox. Right-click on the Connection Manager's area and click New Connection. In the Add SSIS Connection Manager dialog box, select the Connection Manager for Dropbox. In the General page, begin by entering in your information for Dropbox. To do this, you would select the Edit Account Information button and use the web browser page to sign in and complete the authentication process. This will populate the account ID and account name field. There is a timeout setting where a default of 120 seconds is specified. This determines the maximum amount of time that the connection manager will wait while trying to make a call to the Dropbox server. There is also an option to retry on intermittent errors. This option is intended to help recover from possible intermittent outages or disruption of service so that the integration does not have to be stopped due to temporary networking issues. We have designed this option so that it should only retry when it is deemed to be safe to do so. However, there may be exceptions. There is also a Show Access Token button, which can be clicked after you complete the OAuth sign-in process. This token allows the Connection Manager to access your Dropbox instance through the Dropbox API. In the Advanced Settings tab, you may enter in your proxy information if you are behind a proxy server. I will now test the connection to ensure that I can successfully make a connection to the Dropbox server. After creating the Dropbox Connection Manager, you can start to create the Dataflow task to facilitate data integration. Within the Dataflow task, we offer two Dataflow components that would help you to implement integration solutions for Dropbox. The first component we will go through is the source component which is what you would use to read data from the Dropbox server. Later on in the demo, we will show you the destination component, which is what you may use to write data to Dropbox. If you are using SSI as 2012 or later, you should automatically see these data flow components in the toolbox of the data flow view. If you do not see any components, you can click the SSI as toolbox button here. Note that if you're using SSIS 2008 R2 or earlier, you would need to manually add these components to the SSIS Dataflow toolbox. Let me pull out an SSIS 2008 environment to show you how this process would look like. You would make sure that you are in the Dataflow view or else you will not see these items. Right click on the toolbox and select Choose Items. Now click on the SSIS Data Flow Items tab and add the Dropbox Source and Dropbox Destination component. Let's go back to SSIS 2012. The Dropbox Source component facilitates reading data from the Dropbox server. We will drag this component onto the design surface and open the editor. We will start by selecting the connection manager we have just created. If we click on the button right beside the source item path, we can see the folder structure of Dropbox. For this demo, we are going to copy all the files within the general information folder into a different Dropbox instance. The item selection mode consists of different options you can use when reading from Dropbox. 
The default recursive includes retrieving all files and folders within every level starting with the source item path you have specified. If you would like to retrieve just files recursively, you would choose the Recursive Files Only option. The selected item mode will retrieve this particular item specified. To retrieve just the items in the particular folder level selected, you would use the Selected Level mode, while the Selected Level Files Only option would retrieve all files in the level selected. We will now go to the Columns page where you can specify what fields to read data from. By default, all are selected. The best practice would be to select only the fields that you would use in the downstream pipeline component. Notice that we have a Refresh Component button, which you can click to refresh the component to the latest metadata from the Dropbox server. Let's press the OK button to finish the configuration of the source component. After configuring the source component, the next thing we will do is create a Dropbox destination component to write data to Dropbox. You may not necessarily need to use a Dropbox destination component. You may be writing data into another application or database system. To illustrate the purpose of the destination component, we will drag this target component from the SSIS toolbox and connect the Dropbox source to the destination. After we open this component, we will create a new Dropbox connection manager which will point to a different Dropbox instance. The next thing you'll notice is that there are four action types that can be performed when writing data to the Dropbox server. The create action will create new Dropbox records, while the upsert action will update any records if they exist in the system. Otherwise, it will create new records. The delete action deletes the selected Dropbox records. There is also a move action where you may move the selected item to a new location. All these actions require the path field to be mapped. We will use the create action. If we head over to the columns page, you can see that the Dropbox fields have been automatically mapped based on a name match. If this is not the case for you, you can configure individual mappings by selecting the input column dropdown. Note that the file content field takes the binary content of the file as the input. Notice that there is also a Refresh Component button, similar to the Source Component, where a software will retrieve the latest metadata and update the component. The Error Handling page contains three error handling mechanisms to choose from to determine how errors should be handled when they occur. The default option Fail and Error will fail the component completely. The Redirect Rows to Error Output option will redirect the rows that have failed to the destination component's error output. Additional error output columns can be found in the error output, which can contain either the error message from Dropbox or the component. The Ignore Error option will ignore the error. This option is generally not recommended as the component will remain silent for any errors that have occurred. The default output will apply to the Ignore Error option as well. There is also the Enable Columns for Default Output section, which you can use to enable or disable the additional columns in the Destination Components default output. The Dropbox item size will give you the size of the item, while the Dropbox item is deleted column will specify a Boolean which will indicate whether the item has been deleted. The Dropbox item path will specify the path of the item and the Dropbox is directory will tell you if the item is a directory or a file. We will now close this and execute the data flow task. This concludes a demonstration of the Dropbox components from within our SSIS Productivity Pack. There are many other components in the SSIS Productivity Pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.